Hey guys, I'm Alex. You're watching Big Out Books, and today I'm here to do a double book review. I'll be talking about Birdie by Tracy Lindbergh and The Break by Katharina Vermet. And these are two novels that share a lot of similar themes, and they're both Canada Reads nominated books. Uh, Birdie was on the shortlist last year for the 2016 Canada Reads. The Break is currently on the long list for the 2017 Canada Reads. Uh, these books are both also written by female Indigenous authors. We have Tracy Lindbergh, who is Cree and from Alberta, and we have Catherine Vermette, who is Métis from Manitoba. And both of these novels are grounded in the perspectives of Indigenous women living in Canada today. Um, some of the strengths that they have in the community and some of the difficulties that they face and in particular the dangers. So both of these novels deal with quite difficult subject matter and in particular sexual abuse and assault. In Birdie, our main character goes through repeated sexual abuse as a child and the novel explores some of the long-term effects of what that does to her. The Break, on the other hand, is about a single instance of sexual assault and it follows a girl who innocently enough goes to this party and things get out of control and she finds herself uh, attacked by a gang of people and she ends up in the hospital and it's about her family coming together as they try to work through this moment of crisis. So though these novels deal with these heavy upsetting subjects, at the heart uh, both of these books are about how to overcome trauma and what people need to do in order to uh, move past some of these difficult events. So I'm going to start off talking about Birdie by Tracy Lindbergh. And at the start of this novel, we see a woman who's about to have a complete physical and psychological breakdown. Um, Birdie is at the point of collapse. She has lived this hard life with a traumatic past and it is catching up with her. So for most of the book, she is lying um, in bed and she's unresponsive to the people around her. But we as the reader see how active her mind is and her mind is racing through her past um, full throttle. And there's no real respect to chronological order. So it can be a disorienting first read as Birdie bounces around between memories. And it seems kind of like random how she jumps around. But once I got used to it, I really grew to like this elastic effect of time. It reminded me of Faulkner in a lot of ways. Our understanding of Birdie's life comes together very gradually as we just piece together different memories that she gives us. So we see her as this bookish child and she's shy and she hides out in her little bedroom under the stairs. Which we see her as a kind of angsty teenager living with this uh, white foster family who are well-meaning but kind of clueless. And then we flash forward and see her as a homeless woman roaming the streets of Edmonton. So all these memories work together to form an understanding of Birdie's life. And I found that this novel worked so well because Birdie is such a lovable character. Uh, she's definitely unique. She is this big Cree woman. She's often quite snarky, but she also has this really big heart. She's really compassionate. She's a very keen observer of the people around her, and she's got such a resilient spirit. Birdie goes through a shit ton of stuff in her life. Um, but as I said, this novel is about recovery. When Birdie does eventually get better, it's not through any Western means of recovery. So she doesn't start taking medication or she doesn't start going to therapy, but rather Birdie's recovery lies at a return to a community and family and to also traditional ways of knowing. So for her, that's holding a feast at this Pimatisuin, which is this tree uh, that she honors at the end of the novel. And she also connects with her family. Family. And what I like about this book is family is not the nuclear family that you're born with, but rather family is a chosen family. So it's the people around you that you choose to be around, that they choose to be around you, and you all help build each other up. And in this case of the novel, they did all happen to be female. So it does focus on the power of those female relationships and how women can help heal past wounds. 
In The Break by Katharina Vermette, we see a lot of similar themes as to Birdie. We see a family at a point of crisis, and we have to see how they come together and find a way to heal and move on together. Uh, the family is uh, mostly made up of women, so once again there's that emphasis on female relationships and the power of women to heal each other and the importance of those bonds. Like Birdie, the break also emphasizes the importance of a return to indigenous ways of healing. So the family at the end leaves the city and goes up north to participate in a sweat lodge. So it's again looking for healing in these non-Western ways. So focusing on community, family, and these traditional ways. Unlike Birdie, this book is a lot more straightforward, so if you prefer your narratives linear and easy to follow, this might be a book that you would prefer. Um, Vermette takes us through the minds of quite a few of the characters in this novel, and each chapter is focused on uh, that character's perspective. My only complaint with this format was that there were probably too many characters whose perspectives we explored that didn't have different enough styles. So I found a lot of the characters read in the same kind of voice, and they weren't different enough to justify why we were seeing things through their perspective. And the perspectives that I enjoyed the most were the ones that were uh, quite different. So I liked reading uh, the ones from Tommy, who is a Métis police officer trying to solve this case. And I enjoyed the ones from Phoenix, who is this uh, quite troubled girl who, um, spoiler alert, ends up being responsible for the attacks, which I think is quite interesting in a novel that focuses on the healing powers of female relationships also has a female at the heart of um, the assault and the things that go wrong. So things can go wrong between females and it's not just men that are causing all the problems for these women. The multiple perspective approach is great for keeping the reader wanting to keep turning pages. I found this book to be highly readable because you're always wanting to go forward with the story because you keep getting new information or new perspectives from each narrative voice, so it's a hard one to put down. Um, in the end, ultimately, I think I preferred Birdie. It was just a bit more formally inventive, it was more playful, and it just had more personality personality to me. I just really grew to like Birdie as a character and I think she sticks with me more than anyone in the break. But the break is a great portrayal of the glorious city of Winnipeg um, and it definitely brought to life that place, especially in the winter. So this was a good book to read in the cold months. I would say if you're a fan of plot and character, The Break might be a more enjoyable novel, but if you like a uh, more inventive style of storytelling, um, Birdie is definitely a great read as well. One last interesting shared similarity about these books is that they both featured a narration by these dead women who are absent in the text. Um, Birdie's mother, in the case of Birdie, uh, narrates the beginning and the end portions, even though she has disappeared for most of the book. Um, and in the break, we hear from Rain, who is um, also a woman who was unfortunately killed. Um, she's looking down on her family, kind of musing on what it's like being dead and seeing everyone. So I thought that was an interesting uh, link that both of these books had, and I think it's because both authors are paying tribute to the missing and murdered indigenous women in Canada and they're trying to humanize these women and make them more than just a statistic or a headline which happens all too often. I think both of these authors are trying to show that these are women that have full lives and that have families that love them and miss them sorely and I think I read uh, Tracy Lindbergh in an interview talking about how um, People would care if it were their family member that went missing, and one of her goals in writing this novel was to make um, the readers feel like they were our family members. So when we read about these upsetting stories that happen far too often, we're supposed to be reminded of these strong Indigenous women that we're reading about in these texts. So for that reason alone, I think that these books are really relevant. They're both highly enjoyable reads, and I recommend both of them. And it's also amazing to think that these are both debut novels, so I can't wait to see what these writers do next.